the cost to build, operate, and maintain a recycling processing facility can be quite significant. So the current trend is to build larger regional capacity facilities that have economies of scale to help lower the overall cost of processing. This particular presentation is based on a larger regional materials recovery facility that would be processing 500 tons per day. When we talk about processing, we're talking about the combination of machines and labor that are used to separate and recover each type of recyclable material collected from a single stream recycling program and then also what it takes to remove non-recyclable materials that may be included with the recyclable materials. If you want to determine the makeup of the material in a load of recyclable materials delivered to a processing facility, you would put that load off to the side and then you would take out and measure each recyclable material that's in the load including non-recyclable material. From there you could determine what the value is of that entire load based on the contribution of each material that's in the load. That would be considered a spot audit. In the real world all these loads are continually tipped onto a recycling tip floor and they're constantly pushed and blended in with all the other material that's delivered to the recycling facility. Since the material percentages can vary from load to load and are different at different times of the year, in reality you're taking an average value of the material over time. This slide shows materials being delivered to the recycling processing facility. The photo on the left is a route truck that has traveled through a residential neighborhood, collected the materials, and then tipping them onto the receiving floor at the processing facility. The picture on the right is a transfer trailer where materials have come from a further location and transferred into a larger trailer and then delivered to the processing facility. The transfer trailer holds the equivalent of two and a half truckloads of route trucks. After materials are tipped onto the processing facility tipping floor, a conveyor takes them up to a higher elevation and then gravity is used to have the materials flow through the facility. Single stream processing facilities use different types of screens to separate the paper fiber from the containers. This is a typical incline screen where paper fiber floats across the top of the screen and containers such as bottles and cans fall through the screen or fall back on the screen. After the paper fiber floats across the screen, it still has other materials in it that have to be removed, such as cardboard and other non-recyclable materials. This is done by manual labor that sees the materials, pulls them off the line, allowing the clean paper fiber to continue on the conveyor system. While the larger paper floats across the top of a screen, the smaller paper fiber and the containers, bottles and cans, fall through or back on the screen. The smaller paper fiber and the containers are then conveyed to a different part of the processing system where the containers are separated from each other. Here is another type of screen that is on an incline where the smaller paper fiber floats across the screen while the containers fall by gravity on the slant of the machine, thus separating the containers from the smaller paper fiber. After the containers are removed from the paper fiber, the first element typically used for the container processing system is an overhead magnet 
to remove the steel cans and lids. As materials pass on a conveyor, there's an overhead magnet that removes the cans and then takes them away to a bunker for storage where they can later be bailed. Aluminum cans are not magnetic. However, they can be removed automatically by using an eddy current. An eddy current imparts a light charge onto the aluminum can and repels it from a rotating drum at the end of the conveyor. The other materials on the conveyor, such as plastics, fall by gravity, thereby separating the aluminum cans from the other recyclable materials. After removing the steel cans and the aluminum cans, the plastics are sent to optical plastic sort machines. Here are two machines depicted in this photo. The optical plastic sort machines use near-infrared light technology to recognize and differentiate each type of plastic since each type of plastic has a different near-infrared light spectrum. In this example, you're seeing where three types of containers are separated by each other. The, con the materials move along the conveyor at a high rate of speed, and at the end of the conveyor, high-pressure air jets will push the material into the respective compartments so that they'll be separated from each other. The last step in the paper processing system is to remove any contaminants that don't belong with the paper fiber. In this case, quality control sorters are removing the contaminants and the paper is then being conveyed to a baler where the material will be baled up and densified and then shipped to markets.